hey, this Road Warrior Animal, and you're watching Jobber Jabber. Oh, what a rush. Finally, you do it here for Jobber Jabber. We put a list together of the top 10 most memorable matches, matches that even non-wrestling fans might remember, right? Um, if you're a wrestling fan, why do you have a hammer? <laughs> I might not make it through this. So, even if you're a wrestling fan and you haven't seen these matches, you need to go watch them because they are they play a significant role in wrestling. And... You have your phone off, friends. If it goes off, I'm smashing. Alright, I'll turn it off. Are you going to edit this or are you going to keep this all in there? You can keep it all in Okay, cool. So, let's start off with number 10, are we? Owen Hart versus Bret Hart. What's significant about that? I was thinking about that. I don't know if anything is really significant about it. It was just a great match. One great of the best match. matches ever, really. I, right. I mean, it shows up on every list that people talk about best matches ever. Um, and them being brothers, I think, played a little role in that. The story uh, was, the story behind it was amazing, too. That built, the way they built it up, the family feud. Right, right, right. It was it just all built up to that, and that the match itself was great. It was just a blow off to a great few. You said blow off. <laughs> Screwed up a little bit while you're up against the main chain. There we go. All right. And then at number nine, we pulled out the Hogan <laughs> versus. <laughs> I'm not good at that. We pulled out the Hogan versus Warrior match where Hogan actually gave up his title. Yeah, it was the only time in Hogan's first run in the WWF where he dropped the belt clean. Yeah. Wow. That's why it's significant. I was a horrible champion, actually. And it ended up not working out because no. Warrior was a horrible champion. Yes, he was. How long did it last? A year. A year? Not even a year. Nine months. Oh. Well, Warrior. anyway, it's on the list because Hogan actually dropped his title. Warrior was such a bad champion. There was a long stretch. Like six months after this, there was a long stretch where he wasn't even in a feud. Now, how often do you have a world champion? Yeah, who, who did he fight in between that time? Well, he was in a feud with Rude for a while, but then he never really had a feud. He a main feud ever. That's how bad of a champion he was. I couldn't even put him in a feud. <laughs> All right. But it's on the list because it was significant to wrestling. Yeah. And it was probably the best match for both of their careers. Right. I mean, neither one of them are known as great workers, but that was a good match. Well, they got to get somewhere on the list because they're both significant to wrestling themselves. I mean, everybody knows who the Ultimate Warrior and Steve Austin is. Speaking of that, everybody knows who The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin is. And they put together a match at WrestleMania. It was basically the changing of the guard, um, where Stone Cold Steve Austin became uh, the face of the company and started the whole feud with uh, Vince McMahon. Yes. And that was a, a great match. I mean, they, they fought a couple times. Um, I don't remember which one was the actual uh, chain of the guard. I guess I should look that up. But they put on a hell of a match. Everybody knows about the Rock and Stone Cold feud. So this was the beginning of, of the era of Stone Cold being the, the guy. bad guy. The, 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 uh, uh, the nemesis to Vince right. McMahon. And I think most people would agree that the two, the two, uh, the two most monumental guys in wrestling history would be Hogan, or not monumental, but most influential guys in terms of making wrestling mainstream would be Hogan and Stone Cold. Right. And right. this is where it kind of began. He beat the Rock. And the Rock is right up there too. But he took off and did his thing. Uh, number seven, we have Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon's late ladder match. It wasn't the first ladder match, right? I think it was the most significant. It was the first time that it was, I think, done in like a, I think that was at WrestleMania 10. It was the first time that it was, the ladder match was done at a, like a main event. It wasn't a main event. Right? Like in a pay-per-view, it was the first high visibility ladder match. Right, and it was and a great match. They did a great job. Right. Uh, if you go back and watch that now, it was very mild compared, compared to, to what they do now. Yeah. But then, it set the tone, it set the pace. Um, moving on to number six, speaking of tables, ladders, and chairs, this match set the bar so high for tables, ladders, and chairs that yeah, they can't do anything now. The Dudleys versus Edge and Christian versus the Hardys at WrestleMania 17, I believe it was, or whatever, it set the bar so high for these tables, ladders, and chairs matches. I don't think they can really do anything that would surprise anybody. I mean, this match. Well, and, yeah, and this match was. They had a ton of these matches, too. Right. It was kind of the beginning of the spot fest wrestling. Yeah, it was. You know, where nothing matters except how many high spots you can do. But you have to admit, it was amazing the things they did, the things they pulled off there. It was, whatever it was. 
and you even talk to these guys and they even say what we did there set the bar so high there's nothing more we could do besides get hurt or kill ourselves I mean, literally stupid. wrestling's not about not supposed to be about how many moves you can do that could kill you it's supposed to be entertainment well the bar was set so high with this match that everybody pretty much knows about it even if you're not a wrestling fan because it was crazy the things they were doing moving on to number five uh, the Rock versus Mankind in the I Quit match. Mankind took so many headshots during this. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is famous for being in um, that documentary, Beyond yeah. the Man. Is um, that what it's called? Yeah, something like that. And his family was ringside. You could see his family crying. He was emotional. Yeah, because the Rock hit him with a chair like 18 times. Yeah, and, and, and Mankind, being the person that he is, kept going, kept going, kept going. And I think it got carried away. But for some reason, they kept going and it set a precedent to these I Quit matches. And I don't think it'll ever be repeated again. And his family was so distraught that mankind felt horrible that, after Yeah, that. and that kind of you know, actually played a big role in his retirement. His early it did. Retirement. It did. I mean, mankind, I mean, he, the things he did was unreal. Um, moving on to number four. What's number four, Parley? Uh, Brock and the take Brock and Taker. Brock and Taker and Brock Lesnar ending the Undertaker streak. Yeah, I wish they had chosen somebody besides yeah. Brock. Yeah, yeah. Do we have to say much about it? Uh, it's significant because the Undertaker had the streak. I think it was what twenty three, something like that. Brock Lesnar was the chosen one to end the streak, but it is a significant in wrestling history. Um, I hate to put it they that high. Been, so they should have. Yeah, they should have let that happen instead of DeBrock, a part-time guy. Just, you know, I don't like Nobody likes him. Yeah. They should have given it to somebody who was on there. Oh, somebody, somebody that could have used that push yeah. and moved up the ladder for him. Because Brock was going to be up there anyway. Roman. <laughs> that's actually that's the first name that came Yeah, I know it. I know it. Uh, number three. This is on every list you talk about. The Montreal Screw Job. No, Shawn no. Michaels versus Bret Hart. Everybody knows about this. Um, still don't know if it's a work or if it's... I think it's pretty well established that it was a shoot. It was not right. a work. Okay, well, whatever the case is, people argue back and forth whether it was real, whether it was fake. It's hard to tell. Nobody's coming clean. I think it's very clear that Brett was not in it. Yeah, I don't think he was. How many people knew about it before is up for debate. Brett, right. Brett did not know it was that. And that was pretty horrible to do what they did to him. Yeah, it was horrible, but really, there was plenty of blame to go around for everybody because Brett would also be a good person. But look at the attention that it drew. And that was the beginning of the attitude era. Right. And that's, that's what that created, Mr. McMahon. Right. And that drew a lot of attention and possibly started the whole swing to WWE from WCW. It did, yeah, for sure. Uh, number two. Taker and Mankind. Undertaker versus Mankind. Back to the Mankind this guy, <laughs> doing crazy stuff. can you believe this? He falls off the cage. He falls through the cage. He has a tooth stuck in his nose. Which was not planned. Which was not it planned. Was not None supposed of it was to fall through there. No. And he kept going. Undertaker at one point said, I thought he was dead. I mean, he literally he, thought he was dead. I think he separated his shoulder. He, he was knocked out for a minute. And he kept going. <laughs> he kept going. I don't know if that's like dedication or just ignorance or what. It's, it's for his job. I mean, that tells you he loves what he does and he loves the fans. But good God. Hats off to Mankind. <laughs> and Undertaker, you can see when he's on top of the cage looking down, he's like, oh my God. He stayed in character. He stayed in character. He kept going. Mankind smiled with a tooth stuck in his nose. <laughs> Keep going. Definitely so, memorable. It's definitely memorable. Everybody remembers that. But of course, What's the number one most memorable match that everybody knows, even if you're not a wrestling fan? Tell them, Farley. Hogan and Giant. Everybody I, knows. I don't know if anything will ever pass this. No. Wrestling only is what it is because of that match. Yep. Hogan slamming the Giant was uh, most memorable. Everybody knows that. I mean, there's not a person on this planet, non-wrestling, wrestling fans, that don't know about Hogan slamming under the Giant. There's a lot of different eras in wrestling. But I think in the whole timeline of wrestling, there's like a clear break. Like before right. WrestleMania three, it was mostly a niche kind of entertainment territorial. After WrestleMania three, it was mainstream. Right, and that's because of that match. Yeah, and that's uh that's our top ten most memorable matches. 
um, in WWE. That's it. That's it, man. Thanks for watching. Hey, Farley, stop. Thank you.